So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pour it uh, into some cold water and see what happens. I'm going to pour it from a great height and you can see that getting to sublime. Got sulfur vapour there and you can see why uh, it's referred to in the Bible as a brimstone or the concept of God's wrath as in burning fire and sulfur because if you get burning sulfur onto your skin it causes a very 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 painful burn. Very beautiful colour that. So we just leave that down here and I'm going to reach over for a glass rod here and I'm going to begin to pull this out and see what it is. Here we have an entirely different form of allotropic sulphur known as plastic sulphur. It should have cooled down enough for me just to be able to pull it apart and it's plastic sulphur because all the molecules of sulphur have been able to stretch and you can see it can stretch into little fibres. And that's why sulphur uh, was melted and used as an insulator uh, in electrical components years ago as a rubber type substance. Now, I've, uh, a couple of days ago, just rehearsed this and did a couple of times before and I left it deliberately out today in the bright sunshine. And as you can see, it's changed from a plastic substance into a very, very brittle substance because it's changed allotropic form yet again. Same chemical properties but very very different property, physical properties from this spongy rubbery plastic sulphur. Now one thing you can do with uh, native sulphur or out of the ground is uh, you can heat it up and then you can let it crystallize and this is exactly what I've done in this little crucible. I heated it up till it was uh, that red viscous liquid and then I let it crystallize. We've got a form of sulphur called monoclinic sulphur. A much better example of this here in one of these old chemistry books. Now this is one of my favourite chemistry books, I think I've shown you before. It's Chemistry Experiments by A. Kemper, a German. And actually on the front he's got both forms of sulphur. He's got rhombic sulphur and he's also got um, monoclinic sulphur as well which we looked at there. And this is a, a good example inside the crucible if you were able to see it under a microscope. So this is sulphur that's been heated up and slowly cooled down and the centre of the molten sulphur has been poured away and it's left these beautiful crystals here of monoclinic sulphur. Now the other way we can produce different crystals of what's called rhombic sulphur and as you can see here there's a nice colour picture of them on the front is and we just go over to the fume cupboard here is if we were to dissolve uh, sulphur powder in this substance called carbon bisulfide or carbon disulfide. Now this is a very very toxic flammable substance and I'm not going to use it in the fume cupboard just with an open flame anywhere near it. I'm going to go and, and use a much less toxic substance known as toluene and it dissolves beautifully in toluene and if my assistant is able to focus on this you should be able to sort of see those beautiful crystals of sulphur that have formed and simply all I did was dissolve the sulphur in this and let it very slowly cool down and you get this beautiful crystalline form of sulphur. And this is what it looks like whenever it's poured out into a little crystallizing basin. You can just see that. The crystals are a little smaller simply because it has cooled much much quicker and the crystals have come out of solution. But you can see there and this is sort of a uh, crystals that you would get uh, from hot molten springs where you would get sulphur uh, dissolved in hot water in the hot springs. So I think that's all we're going to have time for just now in this video. Uh, I thought it would be just fun to show you actually the actual element sulphur and there we can just show you there that it's begun to cool down and become much uh, more uh, liquid than it was at the viscous and obviously you can see in the crucible there that I was using that it was able to sublime from the top so we just pour that out there and that should then crystallise again into a crystalline form. You can just see the crystals just forming just there. It's giving it a lot of heat energy while it does it so a bit of put it down. So that's all we've got time for just in our unedited video. Uh, thank you for watching please like and subscribe and I'll do some more interesting videos about sulfur and its inorganic compounds.